It's that time again. We have a brand new Unreal Engine version preview to check out. And as per usual, there are some audio features that I'm really excited to look at. There was, however, a fair amount of self-discovery on this one. Currently, the documentation page only goes up to version 5.6, but I'm guessing this will change once 5.7 fully releases. And if we look at the roadmap, all of the cards listed for 5.7 were also present in the 5.6 roadmap. I also want to point out that under the forward looking tab on the roadmap, the audio category isn't mentioned at all. Does this mean we aren't getting any new features planned for Unreal Engine Audio? That, I'm not sure. If I had to guess, I would say that it's more likely that the team over at Epic has some features planned that they may not be ready to share with us just yet. So for now, let's take a look at 5.7 preview and see what's new. So before we dive in, one of the first things that I always do when working on these research type videos is I come up here to edit, plugins, and under audio, I turn everything on. Not something that you would typically do in a project, but if you happen to be also following along in 5.7 preview and I show something on the screen that you're not seeing, chances are there's a plugin for it that needs to be enabled. Now, Unreal Engine Audio goes so much deeper than just meta sounds. However, meta sounds is probably where you're going to spend a large portion of your time. So I've already created a new meta sound. Uh, everything is default. I haven't done anything to this. And for those of you who watched my 5.6 preview video, uh, you'll know that there was some quality of life improvements to our meters over here. And in 5.7, it looks like we also have a new highly requested meter that we can add. And that is our loudness meter. Now with our loudness meter, uh, we have short term and momentary. And from what I've been able to decipher, it seems like short term may be uh, more akin to RMS and momentary seems to be more peak. And if we just go ahead and add a wave player here, we'll make it loop and just gonna throw an asset in here. And if we hit play, so you can hear that our audio is playing and our short term does kind of seem to just sit between minus 14 and minus 15, which is what suggests to me that it might be RMS. And our momentary is much more active and reactive to the audio, which leads me to believe that it is peak. Now, if we stop this and we can see again, that slowly fades out whereas our momentary just dropped off very quickly. Uh, truth be told, I'm not quite sure yet what this integrated is, uh, because even after we stop it, it's there's still a value here. And I've noticed, and I don't know if it'll do it right now, uh, but I noticed while I was testing stuff out that even after it's stopped, this value does change. Um, I don't know if it's still trying to average data or what exact, oh, it just changed there to 14.6. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what exactly this one is. If you know, let me know in the comments. I also want to point out that with our loudness meter, uh, this is also now an option inside of our audio insights tool. So it's not just in meta sounds. You know, if you're using the Audio Insights tool to kind of help mix your game, which is a great idea, uh, then you'll have access to the loudness meter here as well. The next thing that I've seen is over in our interfaces, uh, there is this UE test update. If I had to guess, uh, this probably isn't going to stick around um, or it may get changed to a different name or integrated differently. But adding this interface um, just adds some new inputs as well as outputs, 
one for a float and one for trigger. Now on the surface, these do look like inputs and outputs that we can already currently create inside of MetaSounds, but maybe there's something going on on the back end with these that I'm not aware of just yet. Uh, I do know that hovering over this does give us a tooltip that says a float input used for testing MetaSound interfaces. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the intention behind this is, so we'll, this is something that we'll have to keep an eye on. Now let's take a look at some new nodes that are in MetaSounds. Uh, there are more than these three, uh, but these three were the ones that really stood out to me. Uh, the first one that we have is a mapping function. And you're probably thinking that this looks pretty close to the map float. And it is fairly similar. If I'm being completely honest, I wouldn't be surprised if these actually get merged into one node. However, the difference between them is if we click on our mapping function here, you'll notice that over on the left-hand side, we actually have the ability now to add a curve. By default, it is linear, uh, but we can now add a curve. And so instead of just being linear zero to one, you know, if we're using the default, uh, we can kind of set it so that it either ramps up or it ramps up really quickly and then tapers off, or we can do custom curves. And now we just have more control over our float mapping range. I did also notice that there is an option for wrapping inputs. And the tooltip says whether or not to wrap the input values to remain in the defined input range. Otherwise, inputs are clamped. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if these just get merged into one node. And when clicking on the map range float, we have some information over here that we can tell it what to curve. Uh, but for now, this does seem to be its own independent node. The next node that we have is a timer node. And if we hover over this, the tooltip says a node which outputs a time value in seconds with optional scaling. Now, the functionality of this is fairly simple. It acts like a stopwatch, but it does give us a timer independent of our MetaSound being active. So we can activate our meta sound, which has a timer running. And then this we can trigger to start and stop independently. Having the option to scale means we can kind of do things with say like time dilation and things of that sort. And you can use the flow output to do whatever it is that you want to use it for. And the last node that we have here is our fade and i'm really excited for this one because up until this point i've been creating fades using value nodes and interp2 nodes and triggering them that way and the problem that i've run into with those is they've always been a linear fade so with this fade node aside from you know being able to trigger it and reset it we can set the duration of that fade. By default, it is currently set to one, and we can adjust our start and end values. And so with the MetaSound patches that I was creating, I would have to create one to fade in and another to fade out. But with this, uh, right now, starting value is at zero, end value is at one. So this would be a fade in, but we can just go ahead and flip these numbers and if it starts at one and then goes to zero, it would of course be a fade out. And below that, like I said, the problem I was running into was everything was linear. We now have other curve functions so that we can create a more natural curve and really tie that fade into what we want it to do inside our meta sound. Uh, we can adjust the curve exponent. Uh, this is for curves that have an exponential type. Uh, so we have the exponential and the exponential inverted. And we also have start time. So this one's really neat. Uh, this would essentially act as a delay. So 
Maybe you're working off some logic that you want to use to trigger this, but you may not want the fade to necessarily happen. As soon as it's triggered, you can then use this start time to kind of delay that fade function and really make sure that it is exactly where you want it. And then we have the reset value on done. On the right hand side, uh, we can pass our trigger out and we do have a value or a trigger for on done. So say our start time is set to zero, our duration is set to one. One second after this is triggered, it, we can use that trigger for whatever we need to and we can pass this float value out. Now with the node selected over here on the left, uh, there is a dropdown where we can change this from float to audio. And I really like this, that way we don't have two separate nodes, one specifically for float and another specifically for audio. We do have the option just to go ahead and toggle this in here. Um, developers, if you are watching, love this idea, would love to see more of it in different nodes. And then we can trigger this on nearly done. So when it's right towards the end of being finished, we can fire off a trigger. Maybe we need to prime something and get it ready for this functionality to be passed through to it. The last feature that we're gonna talk about in this video is the one that I am the most excited for, and you're actually watching it happen right here on the screen, and that is subtitle functionality in a meta sound. So again, if you watched my video on the 5.6 preview, uh, you know that standalone subtitle assets were a thing that was introduced in 5.6. Uh, a lot of this was used for the sequencer so that you can add subtitles to level sequences. Uh, for audio assets, uh, previously we used to have to come into the details and set subtitles here on the raw asset. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, this opened up in my waveform editor because I have the waveform editor plugin enabled. Um, Without that, if you double click, it'll just open up the properties, but with waveform editor, it opens up there. I'm rambling. Um, so this was a pre-recorded voice line that I created. The last feature that we're gonna talk about in this video, and I went ahead and created a standalone subtitle asset for it. So you can see that's the text that you saw on the screen. And I've already set all of these. Uh, so the start time, the offset, and things like that. Uh, I was able to play around with subtitles in 5.6, but I ran into an issue where it would only present the first one, the, whatever the first index I had here. It wasn't properly cycling through. If I had to guess, one, either I've done something totally wrong and I'm talking to you about a feature that was already available, or they were still working out some bugs. Uh, I did notice some issues in 5.7 where it would kind of skip some of these sometimes, and maybe I have my values set wrong, uh, but I was able to come in here and sort my priority per line and just make it increase. That way it forced the engine to come up with uh, the correct subtitle. But if we open up our MetaSound, and we select source and we scroll down over here under the advanced drop down we'll have asset user data and you can see i already have one array element and that is a subtitle asset but one of the neat things about this is if we expand this out and i'll expand the window also and i'll just go ahead and expand all you can see that we have access to all of the properties of that sound or that subtitle asset. That way we don't have to keep flipping back and forth between tabs. We can just make sure that everything is what we want it to be right here without having to leave the meta sound. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap things up on this video, taking a look at some of the new audio features coming in 5.7. 
Now with all of these videos that we do, looking at the previews, I do want to remind you that any of these features are subject to change once 5.7.0 fully releases. So please take them with a grain of salt. And also because there was a lot of self-discovery that I had to do for this one, it's possible that there may have been something that I've overlooked. So if you notice something that I haven't talked about in this video, let me know in the comments below. And if there's any features that you would like to see, not that I have any control over that, but just starting the conversation. If you'd like to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you never miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guide Discord server, you'll find a link in the description below. Until next time.